because you came down to hang out with John right after Nolan had been over and met Matt and given Matt the script to read. So I knew that Matt was meeting him and I mean, any chance any of us could get yeah, to like sure. work with him, we're all sort of champing at the bit. But what was kind of funny was that he came to, we live in the same apartment building, and so he came to see me and he knew that he was going to Emily with, with the part but he didn't want it to seem like he was just kind of <laughs> one only, stop shop <laughs> one stop shopping so he bumped into John in the in like either the elevator or the lobby and John talked to him for a half an hour just kind of director to director I, you know they're talking shop and and Chris later admitted that he knew he was coming to Emily with the part but he waited like it was like 5 days or something yeah. <laughs> and knew she was going to be in LA and then she came over at, to his house and read the script and he didn't know. want sort of convenient casting rumors you know that it was like who else is in your building who else can right. we cast <laughs> sorry <Yeah, it's> <laughs> <already else>. start <laughs> knocking else? on doors is Robert here. Downey yeah. in this building he's got that level uh, that attention to detail that you know Stanley Kubrick had, you know, where it's like no detail is too small. His yeah. like depth of knowledge, his research, his understanding of all the dynamics at play between all these different characters and ways to just get these ideas and succinctly like and fit them into a movie. I mean, the, the, the book that this is adapted from is like a tome and it is dense with like, I mean, the fine print. I remember it was like I needed reading glasses to even read the book. It yeah. was just very thoroughly researched and he somehow was able to kind of get all of it into this film mm. but it, but what that means is that each frame is entirely packed full of information i mean you could watch this movie 10 times and get something different because it's just so rich and dense um, and he kind of on set i just feel his command of excellence is so vast and everyone just has to match him where he is and i don't find chris <laughs> exacting I think people have used that word, and I don't find him that way. I find him really curious and interested in what you might bring or do, and you recognize he's cast you for a reason. He lets you know that, and then wants to see what wings you have, you know, and I, I love that I think he's exacting in some ways. I think yeah. he's exacting about some details, right? Oh yeah, like, like he sweats the small stuff, and I want to work with a director who sweats the small stuff. I want him to see everything. But in terms of performance, you're totally There's free. free. You're There's totally freedom. totally free. He really wants to see and what you're gonna do. such authority on set. Like, I mean, he, he, he appears to be very calm. I'm sure there is a storm of information going on inside of him, but it's all clad in this sort of quite serene uh, exterior, you yeah. know, that he's really fascinating and he's funny. Yeah. People don't know that about Chris. He's really fun. He's a big guy, Chris. He's tall. He's like, he's, he's imposing as a figure. I don't know how he is able to be invisible. You don't, I didn't notice him standing by the camera yeah. staring at me. Like he's somehow able to disappear. It was yeah. cool. He's like, like those directors, you know, before we had Video Village. I mean, that's what Coppola said to me 30 years ago. He said that the, the, Antonioni, the, the Italians taught him that the where you sit is to, right next to the camera and, at the, and you see it with your naked eye as you understand human behavior. Because you, you feel it. Because you feel it and you turn to the operator who's the only one who's looking through the lens and, and you just check in and make sure that they saw what you saw, and they'll give you a little nod, mm. and and you know you've got it, and that's how movies were made until you know whenever the monitors came around. And you get that sense with him that his decision of when he has the take and when he's happy is not led by the visuals; it's led by the feeling he has. He's so English; he's the most English person I've ever <laughs> met. Like he's he's like my family. I don't want to tell him this, but he looks like my uncle. Like it's all quite <laughs> funny watching him. But there, there will be no sort of superlative praise. It will be like, yeah, happy, good, yeah, okay, moving on. And you're like, okay, that's it. I saw it with Robert and, and with John and with Robert's wife, Susan, and it was very emotional watching it. And I felt like I was inside of it. I felt like the arms of the movie came out and wrapped around me and pulled me right into it. It was bone shattering watching it. I just loved it. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's, it's great. It's overwhelming. It was like the, the experience I had reading the script. That feeling just was magnified by the by the film. Um, you know, the how, how overwhelming it was. 
you know, because the film it was written in in the first person, which I'd never seen before, mm. and so it it just it just pulled you in, and and you had this really subjective experience that was really overwhelming. And it feels um, like a runaway train that you're on. It's so exciting watching it. Incredible. <laughs> 